Organizers, it's an honor to speak here in Swartz. Actually, um, I'm a medical oncologist and nuclear physician. So, um, to be honest, one year ago I um, didn't have any prostate cancer patient in my practice. You know, because uh, treatments, obviously, of nuclear medicine one year ago was like pretty much non existent. However, since about 10 months in Switzerland, here we have the radium-223, a little bit longer in uh, one single place. So, and then actually it started to grow extremely fast. So I will talk, but not only on bone metastasis, I will make a hyper short talk uh, of PSMA and GRP, GRP receptors. But most of the talk is, of course, uh, of bone uh, metastasis. Well, bone metastasis and, and good palliation of bone metastasis is extremely important. That's not, no, uh, not, not done in, in, in prostate cancer. This is done in, in, in breast cancer patients. However, when you palliate um, correctly, meaning when you have pain-free patients, um, those patients actually have a significant uh, longer overall survival. So a correct palliation of bone metastasis is important. Now, bone metastasis in prostate cancer, of course, you know that uh, more than 90% of castration resistant prostate cancer have bone metastasis. And the problem are the complications, of course, which I think or which we think is the problem why uh, patients have shortening of, over, of, of the overall survivals, like pain, like fractures, neurologic complications, hypercalcemia, myelosuppression, cytopenia, and reduction in mobility. So what is the concept? The concept is to treat the bone metastasis the reduction of the skeletal events, sustaining quality of life, and do further treatment. Overall, making a better and longer overall survival for the patient. Now, uh, we have seen before an, an MRI, uh, which was definitely more lytic than osteoplastic metastasis. Well, not all of the bone uh, uh, metastases of prostate cancer are like this. But these are the metastases, actually, in the moment, actually, in the moment. Maybe later, we also start to treat more like these metastases. But in the moment, we like to treat osteoplastic metastases, and this is how they look in the CT. And here, we have these bone scans. And I think uh, there's definitely a problem in bone scans, which are borderline, and I uh, very much heard, actually, the small criticism. You know the reports of bone scan, which was placed before, which is actually true, especially when you have a borderline bone scan. When you see a little bit, you know, maybe this is activation of the sacrum, of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, some of the uh, iliac joint here, but, but you don't have a real signal. However, we all agree that this bone scan is definitely positive, okay? And um, the good thing about nuclear medicine, and this is actually why an oncologist uh, went after, after his whole treatment into nuclear medicine, is actually that we for once see what we treat. It's actually pretty, let's say, was pretty a new world for an oncologist to really have a target and to identify a target, to know the target, to actually quantify the target. And you all agree that this bone scan is very much positive in the MDP scan. And this is the samarium scan. This is the classic B-diameter treatment, which actually also, also has a, a, a gamma line. You can actually detect it very much also in the bone scan. Here we have, we have classic uh, gamma radiation. Here we have electron radiation with a small peak of a gamma, which actually can also be seen on the gamma camera. However, you see that the, uh, uh, that the extent of the bone metastasis is actually the same here in the MDP scan as you have it in the samarium scan. So, um, before talking about the radium, I just have a short, because then I can explain why radium is so much better. I will have a very, very short overview about the classic beta-meter treatment. Beta-meter treatment is, is actually pure palliation. It's pure palliation, it's electron-based. Um, electrons have a quite large um, tissue penetration. Um, it's used in osteoplastic metastasis and only in osteoplastic metastasis. Indication is pain patients on high opioid doses, and uh, of course the multifocal diseases, otherwise they do an external radi uh, uh, radiation. The outcome is there is no prolongation or an overall survival. Actually, also these trials have not really been, let's say, systematically done, but there's no prolongation in overall survival. There's a pain reduction in 70% of the patients, and there's a reduction in the opiate use. Now, what is the problem of the beta immediate treatment? The problem is actually, that we have a significant drop in actually the, the white blood cells and thrombocytes, which actually prevents us from giving more treatments, actually. We can do that, however, we have to, 
we have to uh, make some, uh, some, some, some compromises, maybe in those or maybe in the um, sequen in this sequential treatment because we have this significant drop in the white blood cells and in the platins. However, you see that actually pain scores are going down and the patients significantly have less use of, um, of opioids, which is a good thing. However, um, in, in nuclear medicine, especially in, in earlier times, several uh, uh, isotopes have been used. It was phosphorus, strontium, which is actually pretty bad to have it in, in your hands. Yeah, also, rhenium-186, rhenium-188, samarium a little bit less, but all those drugs are pretty dangerous actually to give also and give the side effects that I just showed you before. However, when you see radium-223, you see that the maximum emission energy in kilo electron volt is much higher, the dose that you give is much lower, and the average disorientation is much less. This is one of these uh, images you show, uh, actually you can see when you just type in alpha radiation in, in Google, and this is what appears quite first. But it's, it's, it's really like that. When you have a drop of alpha, of radium 2 to 3 on, obviously, ho hopefully not, but if you have it on the floor, you can put a paper on it and it's gone. This is really, this is really pretty amazing to see, but, but it's actually also true. Now, what is the big thing about it? The big thing about it is that actually the radius of the, of the electrons is pretty, is, 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 is pretty long. So its uh, tissue penetration is about, let's say, it's, it's, uh, it's depending on your, on your uh, isotope, but it's 3 to 8 millimeters. This is the, the cause that you hit here, actually, the bone marrow. And this is why you have the, decre uh, actually de the decrease in your platelets and in your white blood cells. However, if you look at radium with the very an extremely short penetration um, uh, uh, range, you see that actually, in theory, let's say in theory, you don't even hit the bone marrow in these patients. Now, why, why radium? Why is radium interesting? Well, because the body um, uh, actually can't, can't differentiate between radium and, and calcium. You see it in the uh, elementary uh, table of the element, the periodic table, you see actually the calcium is here, the radium is here, um, and uh, you see that actually because you know up here, see actually the strontium, by the way, which is also a treatment. You see that in all these patients, actually, radium is confounded by calcium. So, so this is why calcium is actually taken up in the osteoplastic metastasis. You see the radium decay. It's an alpha decay, so it's a change in elements. Radium goes to radon, to polonium, and further on until it's lead at the end. And you see the half-life of 11.4 days, and it's extremely important that the radium is extremely pure because you want to not to have, for example, radium-226 or something like that in your elevate at the end. But with radium-223 in extremely um, high concentration and high purity, actually, you have 11.4 days of half-life. What you can measure if you have some, some uh, contamination with the radium, actually, you can measure some beta decay and some very small gamma decay. Now, this is a, a, a smoke chamber, and here you can see actually how the normal spongiosa and osteoplastic, osteoplastic metastasis actually have a different uptake of, 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 of radium 2 to 3, and therefore a much higher, but also very, very short, this is on the uh, absolute molecular level, where you see this, uh, this uh, alpha rays actually just traveling a very short uh, distance in your, in your osteoplastic metastasis. Now, there was this big trial, I don't go on the phase two study, which was done earlier, but this was the big uh, Alsimka trial, which has been published by Parker. And you see this actually, it's a, it's a large study. It's actually, uh, for nuclear medicine, this is, in all honesty, one of the first, or let's say not even the first, really large study at this size, really comparing two um, 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 placebo, uh, patients with confirmed symptomatic, symptomatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, more than uh, or more the or, um, same as two bone metastases, no known visceral mis uh, metastases, and post orthotaxel or run fit for toxotaxel. It was a two to one design placebo against uh, radium, two to three, 50 kilobecquerel per, per, per kilogram plus uh, best standard of care. You see this on the survival curves. Uh, I don't know about surgeons, but oncologists are usually very, um, very positive about curves like that. Uh, there is, is highly significant actually. The prolongation is, is relevant from 11.3 to 14.9 months. Also, the time to first uh, symptomatic skeletal event actually is, is, uh, is prolonged significantly compared to placebo. 
You see uh, further endpoints, you see um, uh, here uh, the first symptomatic scalar event, we did see this before, um, highly, highly significant uh, in increase in ALP, increase in PSA, um, um, more than a 30% uh, reduction of the ALP, and uh, patients with normalization with the ALP are highly significant compared to placebo. If you look to the subgroup analysis, actually, you see that uh, all subgroups actually profited from the treatment. However, if you, for example, go for the extent of disease, you think, and that is actually what I also see in my practice, that patients with 6 to 20 or maybe more than 20 metastases are best patients because those really have a huge benefit of the treatment. Patients with, with very low tumor burden, like a uh, low number of metastases, they're never really sure what your endpoint is because the patient doesn't really got better because he usually doesn't have this, 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 uh, this uh, symptomatic disease anyway. Patients with super scan, meaning a, a really black uh, uh, and uh, diffuse, a black scintigraphy with a diffuse um, um, osteo, uh, uh, osteoplastic uh, infiltration, um, also have a little bit less, maybe this, this subgroup you have to handle with care. You can also see some, some effects in the myelosuppression in these patients. Previous dots of tax use, that's also important. Uh, yes, no. So both groups are actually with a hazard ratio uh, uh, below than one. And um, here in this, um, in the, um, uh, um, well, it's uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.99, so it's actually still significant. So, and um, uh, you see that actually this is pretty, pretty interesting because you can really use it pre and post dotataxel. So these are the side effects that you have. Uh, they're actually generally very low. Um, you have some, some neutropenia, actually. It's also what we see. It's some neutropenia. It's not, usually not, I never did see one patient who has a, had a relevant neutropenia. Same with thrombocytopenia. Uh, patients have actually uh, uh, bone pain. Um, this is obviously over the whole uh, time of treatment, but what the patients actually have, beginning of the treatment is a flare. Patients actually have an activation of their uh, bone metastasis regarding inflammation, and uh, therefore has an, uh, in, an increase in pain usually in the first week, about in the first week. You have to tell this to patients. Some have diarrhea, um, same number in nausea and vomiting. Um, some of the patients also had constipation in my practice. There is ASCO 2013, some updates. This is a poster which has pre presented by Nielsen. Here you see actually the, the initial opioid use, so actually goes it's significantly less opioid use, the time that you actually are without opioids are, is significantly longer. And also the uh, uh, pain-related uh, quality of life score, you see that you have a significant, especially in the week 16 and week 24, significant increase in um, pain-related quality of life. Uh, there's another study in ASCO 2013, which is the combination of radium with dotataxel. This is a phase one dose escalation. Um, um, the tolerated dose regimen was uh, um, uh, 50 kilogram, uh, kilobeck per kilogram, 60 uh, milligram per square meter dose of taxel. The planned study actually did a phase two, um, which is a compared study again uh, uh, against uh, dose of taxel, is, uh, is a 60 milligram of dose of taxel per square meter every th uh, three weeks, the times 10. Uh, with radium 22 to 350 kilobicarel per kilogram in uh, times five. So this actually is the first patient that we had in the group, and uh, uh, he came last summer. Um, it was uh, part of the EAP, uh, the Early Access Program in Switzerland. Unfortunately, we still not have yet an FDA or the, I mean, we, we, we didn't follow the FDA or the EMEA in the moment, so we, we have, in the moment, we have it on compassionate use first. It was on an early access program. And you see, actually, that it's, it's actually really true that in this patient, actually, which was every four weeks taking the blood, you see that actually the, the decrease in the, in the, uh, in the uh, um, uh, anemia, anemia and in the uh, thrombocytes is really not relevant. Now, how to or where, where to place radium two to three? Interestingly, um, it can be done as, as I told you before, before or after those attacks, like castration-resistant prostate cancer. However, when I see the patients who come actually in the practice, and actually several a week, by the way, in the moment. Um, it's a radium two to three either either before those attacks, because you know the patient is really unfit or 
in brackets doesn't want to have, have chemotherapy, or actually they come really late, meaning after several lines of therapy, including, including several lines of antihormonal treatment, several lines of chemotherapy, and really come at the end of disease. And actually you can treat really both patients. With this one here, you have to be a little bit careful, especially regarding the myelosuppression if patients really had already several lines of chemotherapy. Now, PSMA targeting. This, here we will join a multi-center trial soon. I think I, uh, I, I really just show it because I think it's interesting. I know it's maybe not really a topic here, but I, th really th I really like these images. This is uh, a PSMA, gallium-based PSMA, and you see how, how extremely sensitive this, this, um, this uh, PET scan actually is. And maybe, maybe in, in, in near future, um, uh, with this uh, trial that we actually are conducting together with Germany, the multi-center trial, we start to do this imaging more and more. What it means actually to all the other treatments, we will see because it really, I think it will change landscape when we are so much more sensitive. You see actually the SUF max is pretty high. It's pretty high. Of course, kidney is always higher because those uh, uh, radiopharmaceuticals are secreted extremely fast. We also work on a lutetium-based treatment, which where you can really just change the gallium 68 with lutetium 177. Maybe can combine it with an albumin binder, where you don't have the, the kidney ex excretion. And maybe, and some centers in Germany actually also uh, started to treat. This is a preclinical study with this, with, with it with the uh, uh, GRP receptor, the, the uh, gas stimulating peptide receptor. You, you see here the um, the huge. Uh, Molecule binding, actually this is a bombazin derivative binding to the GRP receptor. This is an in vivo PC3 model with 18 f bombazin. This is a suppression of tumor growth using 177 lutetius bombazin in mice carrying PC3 xenografts. And you can see you can suppress growth. Uh, however, we did transpose this into, into humans in patients with either um, before or after, um, um, also with primary prostate cancer before operation or with uh, late prostate cancer with bone metastasis. And I actually showed that um, it's, it's, it was done in 10 patients and it showed actually compared to ADNF choline that uh, in primary prostate cancer it works actually pretty good when you still have early disease, probably not very variable disease, early disease, however, you have very minor results in patients with metastasized disease. And I think this is probably also more the goal to go for metastasized disease because maybe you would have a treatment and maybe you would have a possibility to see metastasis. However, the SUFMAX was too low to draw any conclusions in our patients with late tumors. So in a conclusion, uh, beta radiation has currently no effect on overall survival. Side effects, especially myosuppression, is relevant. It has an effect on quality of life. Um, especially in pain, and I think it should only be used in highly palliative situations. Radium 2 to 3 has an effect on overall survival time to SRE, PSA progression, ALP progression, and quality of life. <laughs> Side effects are, are generally quite low. Patients can be treated before and after uh, docetaxel and benefit from therapy. Um, however, you have to choose the correct metastatic load. So I, the first patient actually was sent to my practice when the compassionate use um, uh, program opened was a patient with lytic bone lesions. And there you have really to discuss with the referring oncologist that it's probably not useful to do that because your radiation will be too low. The patient also had uh, plur pleural effusions which were, uh, uh, which were positive for prostate cancer. And uh, combination trials will be interesting in the future. And further investing uh, imaging and therapy will will also come in the future. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you very much for this nice presentation on uh, 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 radionuclide treatment on prostate cancer. Are there any questions on, uh, from the audience? You reported only a few side effects with uh, radium 223. Uh, are there any experience to use it for a second course, a second six uh, months course? Also, what I what I did see really is um, the first four cycles are are really tolerated very very well. The fifth and the sixth cycle actually, there the patient started to have you know you didn't know you you can't really see it, but it looks like they were really a little bit going into something like systemic inflammation, something like that. So I would probably avoid in the moment to go in a second, you know, six-time cycle. 
I would probably avoid that. Just uh, maybe, maybe after years when the patient maybe you know has a new clinical situation, but in a moment I would avoid it. Okay. Any other questions? Everything is clear with radionuclide therapy. Do we know anything about costs? Yes, it will be the same level as, epi as, as epiraturone, which I think is, is okay. <laughs> because, you know, production, no, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, let's, let's not make a discussion about prices of, 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 of drugs because that's a, that's, that, that would be more than a weekend. That would be much more, you know. But, but um, I think just regarding the efficacy, regarding efficacy and regarding production, I think uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, efficacy is, is about the same. And production is, is uh, much more complicated. Yes. Yeah, you know, you. That's that's a tough question. You know, the first reflex is to say no, because you know the osteoplastic reaction is not there. But but you know, second reflex is well, I don't know because because there might there is probably a radiation. There there is a radiation in the bone, you know, which is which is probably relevant relevant. However, to have a an effect like with external radiotherapy, you're really somehow sterilizing. I'm not sure because you know just the distance of the of, of the race is too short. So that's a tough question. Uh, I think um, it has to be answered uh, maybe over time. But I'm not too optimistic about that. Okay. No other questions. Thank you very much.